Hi all, I have a cute little historical game to show you from 1860. Our first world chess champion, William Steinitz, was playing with the black pieces. This was played in Vienna, Austria, 1860 against Rainer. So e4, Steinitz plays e5, knight f3, knight c6. We have d4. This is the Ponziani opening. It becomes a Scotch gambit, not Scotch game, because white is gambiting that pawn quite dangerous. We have bishop c5, which is the second most popular move according to chess based line book. Most popular is knight f6. And this sort of continuation has been seen quite a lot. But in this game, we get bishop c5, white castles, d6, c3, bishop g4, queen b3. So looking at f7, but black now plays a very interesting move. He damages white's pawns, sacrificing the f7 pawn. And here, perhaps white should play g takes f3. Uh, this might be the most accurate way of playing the position. Uh, and maybe, you know, black's got some interesting choices here. Uh, if knight f6, you know, the bishop can retreat. And it should be maybe black slightly better. Uh, that might be the best move, in fact. Okay, but okay, white didn't play g takes f3, he played bishop takes g8. This is a big difference now. We have rook takes g8, and actually, the rook is kind of useful on g8. After g takes, we have a very interesting move. Marking out white's damaged pawn structure. Can you see what black plays? Okay, g5, but not only that, preventing f4 here, the rook might swing later like this. And also, of course, we're shielding that h6 square, so even the queen could come maybe on h6 later. Queen e6, we have knight e5 now, and there's a threat now of rook g6 immediately on that queen. To maybe go to h6 later. Check. King g7, and you see the power of the rook now. It will be pinning. If white dead took here, then this is a nasty pin. Just here, in fact, is a nasty pin in this position, pinning the queen to the king. Uh, let's just check this position. Bishop takes g5. Uh, Maybe this is okay as well. Or there's other things like knight takes f3, which could be considered. But yeah, queen takes g5. We just play a king move. Okay, so we have actually king h1, king h8 protecting that pawn, rook g1. So that pawn's under pressure. It just goes now to g4, which makes way for queen h4, among other things. f4, and now we have knight f3. And you might think, hold on, isn't there a weakness of the last move here? It looks good in principle to try and get a queen there, but is the implementation safe? Okay, so in this position, hasn't g4 been left? Isn't that a weakness of the last move? White actually takes this, but there's a very, very beautiful, aesthetically beautiful move in this position, which is actually why I wanted to show you the whole game, actually. The early Steinitz was extremely tactical and ingenious. Can you see what black plays in this position? Okay, I'll give you five seconds starting from now to pause the video if you haven't already. A beautiful, beautiful move. Wow, queen h4. So hitting the rook and the pawn. Now if white takes, then there's checkmate. This is an Arabian uh, mating pattern. Arabian mate, I believe, with rook and knight. And white tries rook g2. And guess what? Another beautiful move in this position. If I give you five seconds here, what would you play in this position? Okay, queen takes h2, beautiful. Here, and now rook g1, checkmate. 
A lovely little game here from William Steinitz, our first world champion played in Vienna 1860. I hope you enjoyed the aesthetics of that one. Comments, questions, likes, shares appreciated. Thanks very much.